Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that did believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, from henceforth, yea, save the spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress? or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor debt, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We want to welcome you this evening as we offer thanksgiving for Doriel Aldine Brooms. And I pray this morning, this afternoon, that God will comfort us as his people as we seek to give him praise, honor, and glory. Let us turn towards him, she, as we sing our first song, Blessed Assurance. Praising my 
Father, we praise you. We thank you this evening. We're glad because we can come into your house to worship. We praise you, Lord, for those of us who are here. We're asking, Father, that your presence will be with us this evening as we give you worship. As we will reflect on the passing of our sister. Oh, Father, we pray that our hearts will be filled with gratitude. We pray, Father, that you will even strengthen the hearts of your children, those who are closely connected to our sister. I pray, Lord, you would comfort them with your presence this afternoon. Let your Holy Spirit, Father, overshadow them. May they feel the peace, Lord, that only you can give. Lord, we pray at the end of this service, Lord, the moments when we would spend in this house, that you would even become more real to all of us who are here. We would become more aware of how fleeting life is. That someday we will all have to stand before you and so that we would prepare our hearts and our lives aright to give you honor and glory. Comfort our brothers and our sisters. Comfort those who are near, those who are relatives, those who knew this lady in any way. And we pray that this service will be a blessing this evening to all of us. These mercies we ask in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. You remain standing for the scripture reading by Michelle Carter. And if by any reason of strength. Psalms 90, verse 10 to 12. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by any reason of strength there be four score years, yet is there strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. We know of the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear. So is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Amen. Let me, you may be seated. I want to offer our personal sympathy to the Brooms family on behalf of the Simmons family and the part of the pastoral team here at Mount Zion. We also want to offer our sympathy to the entire family. We pray that God will strengthen you and keep you as you go through this trying hour. The next song on our hymn book will be, on our hymn sheet will be Beulah Land and we'll 
You'll stand for the singing of that song. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Good evening to all who are present, and even those who are joining us online for this service.
service is homegoing service for our departed sister rooms. I would like on my person join with Elder Simmons in expressing my sympathy on behalf of myself, my Mother Howell, members of the family, and the extended United Holy Church of America to the family and uh, immediate relatives of our sister room. You're all saddened, I'm sure. Uh, some to greater extent than others, depending on the, the closeness of the relationship that we share here on earth. But if we can, for moments, look beyond our sadness, and realize that our sister is indeed a better place than we all are here in this life. Amen. And I strongly believe that if she were given the choice, having experienced the grandeur of heaven, of returning to earth, or staring where she now is, she would prefer to be where she is. And I thank God for her testimony, her witness. Even though she was not a, you know, a person who is very active enough front, etc. Here in this congregation at Mount Zion. Yet we thank God for her relationship with Christ. And like Paul she would say, for to me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. That equation isn't always easy uh, to, you know, accept, but it is a fact. To live is Christ, but to die is gain. So on behalf of myself and family, etc., I would want to express my personal sympathy to all those who are grieving the loss of our sister. When we return to our program at this time, and this is a solo by um, her son, David, saved by grace, and he will follow that by giving us the eulogy of our sister Doria. God bless you, Brother David. Uh, this song, I was at home and um, I had prayed and I wasn't even thinking anything about it when it just burst into my, my thoughts and memories. I believe that God would want me to sing this and may he help me to deliver it. And it's saved by grace.
and I shall see in face to face and tell the story saved by grace and I shall see in face to face and tell the story saved by grace someday when singing and it came back to my mind after her passing. Um, as you all know my name is David Brooms. I'm the last son of the deceased and I shall now um, give the eulogy on the behalf of the Brooms, Carter and our relatives, the rest of our family. Doriel Aldine Brooms, near Elcock, was the first of four siblings to be born to the late Olivia Philippa Carter, who is better known as Vonick Carter. Doriel, Werner, Grant Lee, and Harriet, who is the last and the only surviving of those siblings, were all raised by their mother and great aunt, the late Louise Downs, who we all knew as Gran, at in All Kings Gap Eagle Hall, St. Michael. Doriel's former education was at the Wesley Hall School, where she reached up to the sixth standard. As the years progressed, she met and she fell in love with the late Clyde Oswald Brooms, and they were married. And out of that union was born Jeanette, who's better known as Bonnie, as well, Halden, Olivia, who's better known as Dini, and Wendell. Her last and sixth child will be me, yours truly, David. Mama, as she was referred to by all of her children, grandchildren and even our friends, was very approachable and had a welcoming personality. She welcomed all of her friends to her home and treated them as her own. And like us, they too loved and enjoyed her baking, especially her sweet breads. Mama did her best to guide and to lead us in living respectable lives, to obey rules, and to avoid getting in trouble with the law. And so growing up, if we broke those rules, 
she would administer floggings and punishment to set us on the right path. From our childhoods to adult lives, we learn to love and to respect our mother, to beware when she gave us warning, to heed her counsel, and to appreciate her values. Let me just give you an example of all three categories, categories I've just mentioned briefly. Um, in terms of being beware of her warnings, um, this is from my perspective as one of the children among the siblings and the family. I recall, um, I think Beanie, she was around about 16 at that time, and Mama had spoken to her, and the response that Mama received, she did not appreciate at all. And Mama looked at Dini and told her that the next time that that sort of behavior was ever exhibited by her, that Mama would deal with her with a cuckoo stick, which she had recently acquired from a friend. Just those words alone was enough to produce from Dini the behavior that Mama wanted and expected. And the cuckoo stick remained for its prime function, and that was stirring cuckoo. In terms of taking heed to her counsel, once again, I remember my brother Vendo. He's a young man who's working. He's saving his money. And he had an intention of purchasing a motorcycle unknown to Mama. And his intention was that on the Monday, he would purchase this motorbike. And Mama found out during that weekend, before the Monday. She called Wendell and counseled him. She told Wendell, listen, too many young men are being knocked off of motor motorcycles and are dying in this country. My advice to you is not to purchase any motorcycle. And in fact, don't purchase any motorcycle and bring around my house where I'm living. The Monday came and no motorcycle turned up. And it was sometime shortly after that that Wendell purchased his first car, motor vehicle, a car. It was a red Daihatsu Charade at the time. Now, this one is very personal because, as I had mentioned, we had to learn, we learned to appreciate her values. And one thing that my mother valued was education. She saw the value of an education for her children, and she always made sure that however hard it was with her, that there was always school clothes and shoes for us, her children. And of course, the golden rule is, and the expectation was, that if she purchased the clothes, then we would have found our way to school and try to learn and help ourselves. However, I had a different opinion. Um, all of my siblings, my oldest siblings there, gladly went off to school, but I hated school. And unknown to my mother, I took part in acts of truancy. And I did this from the time I was at Eagle Hall Primary School and Wesley Hall um, Junior School. It was then that I did the Trump thing and went into Legup for a shop that was then there on the control. And it was disclosed to Mama that I did not go to school at all that day, but was in the entire shop all day. Well, that, that night or that evening, I received from Mama what I would refer to as the beating of my life. The next day, she took time out. I had to get ready and move with her. Took me to school and told the teachers. Find out from the teachers, uh, from which class I was in, who were those who were my farm teachers and so on. And told them that she works at Cooper's. Gave them the number and said, if ever I miss school again, 
and don't present a letter, call her and let her know. That was her way of ensuring a safety check to make sure that I wouldn't be up to the, the Trump, the, the school, the don't see again. But to me, it wasn't necessary because there was something profound about that beating that I received. And after that beating, somehow it seems that the, the, the desire to play at front was completely gone from me. I started to attend school, and ironically, I am still, due to the nature of my job, very much attending, um, attending school. And a lot had to do with that beating that I received from my mother. That was the catalyst that propelled me and enabled me and facilitated me being where I am today. So I give God thanks for that and for the foresight and for the no-nonsense attitude because I trampled on her values and I paid the price dearly. After Mama retired from work, she became a diabetic. It was diagnosed later that she was diabetic. And some years after that, um, we, her children and close relatives, got what we refer to as the scare of our life, of our lives when she was hospitalized like for three weeks or two weeks straight with very high, high pressure that they seemed to want to receive or come down. And it was told that she had a mild stroke. Thanks to God's help and care that she received, she returned home and recovered well and was back to herself after some time. And it was shortly after that that she recommitted her life to God and started to attend this church, the Mount Zion Holy Church of America here in Wavell Avenue, Black Rock. Um, she stopped attending but that was due to her issues with her health and her memory. Her short-term memory was affected and she couldn't remember something that she would ask you now. Um, she would ask you like five minutes after because her short-term memory wasn't registering anymore. Thankfully, her long-term memory was very much intact. And during the years, of her retirement, we were able, we, her children, was able to learn from her things from her childhood. She would have told us about her days as a child giving recitations at church during the harvest time. And also the recital she would have given in her school um, for a teacher who was departing and she even remembered the name, Keith Sweet, and she would have repeat that for all of us in the house to hear. So despite her memory failing, her long-term memory, start producing goodies for us because she was also able to tell us about poems and things she enjoyed from her childhood. She loved literature and she would have explained poems to, to us that she would have learned in the library um, during her childhood days and probably shortly after. Um, among them would have been the Inkscape Rock and False Sir John, which also has another name, The Outlandish Knight. She would also sing songs and when we checked the internet, we realized those would have been songs that she would have learned during her lifetime and her younger days. But what I want to thank God for is that there were times too when I would see Mama with her hands folded and she would just like block out the world and she would be singing songs of praise and worship to the Lord who she believed and worshiped. So her life then became a regular routine, basically of sitting in the living room, 
and going to the dining room to eat and back to the living room before she retired um, in the evening. And um, and we noticed during the last two years or so that her energy levels and her movements um, seem to have slowed right down as well. It was on the 15th of December in the year 2021 that her time before sea on earth expired and she passed away peacefully being held in the arms by Wendell who was weeping at the time. She leaves to mourn her five children, nine grandchildren, 13 great-grandchildren, and five great-great-grandchildren, her remaining relatives and close friends. Now, we are thankful for the mother that God gave us in Mama, and the time that she was with us. And may the Lord, she believe in and worship, give peace to her soul. May her name be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and may she attain the resurrection of the just, and be granted eternal life and peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let it be so, Lord. Amen. Thank you, David, for that beautiful song, encouraging song, and also for the reflections of uh, our sister Dory. Amen. One thing we can leave behind us is memory. those fall in line with the will of God, amen, we can ask for nothing more. We want to thank God for the example which our sister uh, set. Thank God for the assurance which she had in her heart that she was Christ and uh, Christ alone. This time it's my pleasure to introduce you to give the sermon for this evening, the senior pastor here at Mount Zion, or Elder Franklin Smith. And we pray that we would all listen to the word, word of God. Bearing in mind that someday we'll be able to pass this way. And the scripture tells us quite plainly that it is an appointment that each and every one of us has. Pointed on the man who wants to die. But after that, the judgment. So, we want to invite Ansel Elder uh, Simmons to lead us in that song, and can it be? And immediately after, we receive the servant of God, senior pastor here at Mount Zion, our Elder Franklin Smith. God bless you. stand
died he for me who caused his pain for me who him to death pursue amazing love how can it be that thou my God just died for me How can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? Tis mystery, oh, in mortal guise, O oh, can explore his strange design. In vain the first more seraphs tries to song the depths of the divine. Tis mercy, oh, let earth adore, let angels rise in war no more. Tis mercy, oh, let earth adore, let angels Thrown upon, so free, so infinite his grace, emptied himself of all and bled for Adam's helpless ways. This mercy, oh, immense and free. Take your seats. I want to join you in thanking God for this God given privilege. Every day that we live, we ought to give God thanks and praise. I want to give honor this evening to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, to our Elder Simmons, the presiding minister. Today, I want to give honor to our Bishop Sinclair Howell, who is the President Emeritus of this 
Barbados District of United Holy Church of America. And let me say until July last year, he was the pastor for our sister, Doyle Brooms. And um, I'm sure that he would have known her well and she would have known him well. And even though our sister Doyle was on the quiet side, I'm sure that she appreciated him and appreciated his ministry here at Mount Zion Church. Also, I recognize, even in their absence, the other members of the pastoral team. And we certainly want to pray God's blessing upon upon you and upon especially the family and friends of our sister, Doriel Brooms. Indeed, I wasn't quite aware of who this woman was until our brother David and his sister met, met me in the office as we planned for the funeral. And then when I saw the, the picture, I said, yes, I know her. I know her. She was very quiet, very quiet person, very kind person, very loving person. And I'm really glad this evening to be able to preside over this service uh, for our sister. Funerals are not what they used to be before. Owing to the ugly intrusion of COVID-19, there were times when this church would be packed to capacity, and of course there would be even some on the outside who would have come not only because they knew Sister Doriel, but because they knew her relatives, her children and grandchildren. But today is a different day, and only limited numbers are allowed in the church. But we want to thank God for you today. We want to thank God for giving you life and health and strength to be here, to be able to um, recognize and, and acknowledge her passing and thank God for the fact that she gave her life to him. Bishop Howell said sermon, but I want to reduce that to a few words of, of uh, exhortation. From the book of Psalms 23, I wonder if I can challenge you to to memorize it. Let's go on, let's try it. The Lord is my shepherd. He maketh me to, he leadeth me beside. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the, I will fear no, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You did well. You did well. Amen. And I guess some of you would have remembered this Psalms. If you're not a regular Bible reader, you would have remembered this from school days. This Psalms really competes with other scriptures for being the most familiar in the Bible. 
especially when it comes to the book of Psalms. It competes with other scriptures for being the most familiar. It's a psalm that we would have, as I said before, learned at home. We would have learned the psalm at school. And we would have rec recognized that Psalm 23 is so familiar, it is not only read, it is also sung. There are a number of different versions of of, of of the song to Psalms 23. We went to the Ironton Church, we heard, heard it sung as a, a chant. If you came here, you would hear it sung as a song that a woman called Jessie, Jessie Seymour Irvin composed. The Lord's my shepherd, I'm not one. I'm sure you know that one. Yeah, you want to sing it? <laughs> she she composed that 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 song. She um, composed that tune, and it is also sung with in anthems and all kinds of various musical compositions. People find this this psalm as a comfort. They find it as a strength. Uh, when things are going against the tide of your life that you can, you can turn to Psalms 23 and you can get some kind of encouragement, some kind of help, some kind of strength, some kind of succor, something to lift your heart and lift your, your courage. And I, I would even proceed to, to say something here that the, the ladies that composed that tune that we were attempting to sing just now that she was from Scotland. And it said that she was the daughter of a priest. And if you went to certain churches, you would, you would hear people sing this song and tell you that they want the Crimean version. You ever heard that? The Crimean version. And they use that term, the Crimean version, because this woman was from this part of Scotland that is called Crimean. And it said that Crimin had an interesting story about it. It said that the, the, the clock maker that made the clock, or in those days, most of those cities had clocks. It said the clock maker put in the five minute sections, he put six in one section. Ma making a mistake, really. So it is said that from that time in Crimean that an hour in Crimean is 61 minutes. And every day in, Chris, in Crimean, 24 uh, minutes is added to the day. So in Crimean, Crimean has the longest, the longest time, the longest hour, the longest period in all the earth. So when you go to church and you hear the Crimean version, that's what they're talking about. Psalms 23 is really a wonderful depiction of the psalmist's life. A wonderful depiction. As, as he sees or as he exchanged positions, he himself was a shepherd, but he exchanged position in the Psalms and he sees himself as a sheep. And he sees the Lord as his shepherd. And that's why he starts the psalm by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. Why did he call the Lord his shepherd? David was conscious of the intricacies, the, all the things that went into shepherding. All of the keen things that, that he had to do to make sheep what they ought to be. He was conscious of that. He was conscious of the minute care that he gave to sheep in those days. As a matter of fact, when God called him, God called him from the sheep court. He was minding his father's sheep. So he understood what it was to be a shepherd. He understood what it, what it really meant for God to be his shepherd. 
for God to look after him in even a greater detail than he looked after his sheep. And that's why he says, the Lord is my shepherd. What one wonders sometimes how, how he really arrived at that ownership of God, what I call the ownership of God as his shepherd. It, it goes right back to his boyhood. It goes back to his boyhood. It goes back to his, his life as a young man. He did not wait until he got old to acquaint himself with God. He was acquainted with God even from a young man. And he nourished himself and developed himself into loving God and serving God until now he can own God as his own. One would remember when he was faced with the challenge of fighting Goliath. When all of Israel ran, all of Israel, um, you know, they, 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 they did not take up the challenge, but David took up the challenge. And he asked himself, if an uncircumcised Philistine is going to defy the armies of Israel. And he went forth and he fought them. He fought Goliath. And he won the battle. Not, not only this, but there were so many situations in, in David's life that really, really made him acquaint himself with God and, and made him turn to God for help. So many situations in his life. If you know how many times that he escaped death, if you know how many times that his life was at stake, if you know how many times that he felt that there was just a step between himself and death. But he realized that in all of his trials and all of his tribulations that there was somebody called God that he could turn to for help. He could turn to God for help. And he, in the second verse of this, of this psalm, is really the psalm that I really wanted to talk about. And with, in which the psalmist says, he, he, he maketh me to, to lie down in green pastures. Now, this don't have anything to do with the graveyard. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And I took some time to try to understand what the writer is saying. Sheep were not like they are in Barbados where we would see two tied around a house or three on a pasture. Sheep were plentiful in their thousands, and David was responsible for them. He was responsible for them. And when the psalmist says that God led him in green pastures, it meant that he was not, he was not tied like we see sheep, sheep tied in Barbados. They are tethered because you don't want them to go into the neighbor's garden. But indeed, indeed, sheep were let loose to graze. I mean, in comfort. To, to, to eat what they want to eat. And to eat their stomachs full. And we realize by knowledge that sheep do not lie down unless they're satisfied. Anytime you see a sheep not satisfied, he's going to be standing on his feet. And I re remember some, a good while ago, that two drivers, two minibus drivers, were driving, going in opposite directions, and when they got to each other's window, one was taunting the other one that he was making all the money. 
One fellow said, he retorted to his friend, he says, I am in good grazing, but I'm tight short. I don't know what you understand by that. But sheep in those days were never tight, and they were able to eat to their pleasure. So the psalmist says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He gave me all that I ever needed. He satisfies me. Not only satisfies me, but there's a word called to satiate means to be more than satisfies. He's saying that God satisfies him. He led him in green pastures. He put him in great good grazing. And now he can look back on his life and he can, he can thank God for the things that God has brought him through. I want to say that our sister, Doyle Aldine Brooms, would have seen the Lord's hand on her life during the course of her sojourn here on the surf. As a matter of fact, anybody that is her age would have come to realize that had it not been for the Lord on this side, they could not have made it the way they made it. You know that our parents and our grandparents made it on nothing. You know we had, they had very little. You understand what I'm talking about? They had very little. And yet they were able to school their children. They were able to clothe their children. They were able to feed their children. But she recognized, she is one of those that recognized that without the help of God, that she could not make it. Yes, she saw the hand of God in all that she did. As a matter of fact, whenever you interview seniors, whenever the priests or the pastor interview seniors, whenever it is their birthday or their special day and you interview them, they're always able to tell you, it had been God on my side who has helped me to reach this age, to meet this stage, this stage of health. It had to be God. I find that in this day in which we live that there are too many people that are putting God on the back burner. Too many people have little or no recognition for God. And they're not conscious of the fact that it is he who wakes us up every morning and sets us on our way. It is he who has made the foundation of our lives secure. It is he to whom we should turn and give thanks. As a matter of fact, in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, Jesus himself said, If any man hear my words and doeth them, I would liken him to a wise man that built his house on the rock. And when the winds blew and the waves came and hurricanes and whatever you know came, it stood because it was founded on a rock. Our lives are just like a building. Our lives is like a building. And if you had to build a building, you will make sure that you have a good sound foundation to build on. Our lives are just like that. We must have a good foundation to build our lives on. And the man that has a good foundation will not commit suicide. A man that has a good foundation will not try to solve his problems by the gun or by the sword. Because underneath you are the everlasting arms. I knew that some of you, 
especially Christians, would say, if I knew then what I know now, I would not have had so many pitfalls in my life. So many pitfalls. So many, so many things I would have changed. So many di different directions I would have gone in. If I knew then what I know now. I might not even have messed with the relationship that I got into. I might have passed that lady on the other side. If I knew then what I know now. But with all our dreaded past, Jesus is still able to reach out to us and turn our lives around with all our dreaded past. We never come to a situation with God that he cannot help us and he cannot bring us into betterment. He cannot bring us into a better place. Yes, we never reach that stage. Jesus is always saying, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's always saying that to us. And thank God for those of you who have already experienced the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those of you who have already accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful experience. And we should be more cautious, we should be more concerned today, like never before, about our living, about our standard before God. I never thought that I would live to see a day like today. And when I talk about a day like today, this is almost a frightening experience that we are facing in 2022. With all of the things that are happening, with all the deaths that are taking place, with all that the pandemic has brought upon us, I think that God wants to open our eyes and think that we should open our eyes. And those of you that have been serving God and have turned your backs on God, those of you who have been promising to serve the Lord but haven't gotten around to it up to now, it is time for you to make that turn in your life. It's time. Yes. Every death that we, or every funeral that we attend, is speaking to our hearts, whether it's a family member or a friend. And I'm sure within this house today that there are several of you who have lost friends, who've lost loved ones, who've lost colleagues. And every time that this happens, every time you become aware of the fact that your friend is gone, it is speaking something to you. It is high time to wake up out of our sleep. It's high time to give our lives to God. God has been good to us. And the Bible says that the goodness of God should lead us to repentance. You know God, good God has been to many of us? You know how many of us have passed through vehicular accidents and are still alive today? You know how many of us have been hospitalized? And through the grace of God, you are back on your foot again? You know how many people have been listening for your obituary? but you're still with us this evening. This is the day for us to open our eyes. The Bible tells us not be like the mule who must be guided with bit and bridle. Yes, 
You put that thing in the horse's mouth to guide him and to turn him in whatever direction you want him to go. We are not like that. We have sense. We have understanding. And the Spirit of God is available to those of us who want to serve the Lord, that we be guided in the right direction. I am tired that every time I hear my wife ask me if I hear the latest, I know what is coming next. I tell her, don't tell me. Every time that she tells me, you hear the latest, I know what's coming. Somebody is gone. Somebody's dead. Somebody's gone from time into eternity. Every time you hear the voice of a preacher, you ought to be reminded it's time to make things right with the Lord. I am sure that Sister Doriel would be happy if some of our children and grandchildren would follow her in the faith. I know some of you are. But I think she'd be happy. Amen. To know that there are those of you that have picked up the mantle and are following her in the faith. She wants to meet you in heaven. She wants to know that your life is hid with Christ in God. I pray this evening that this will not just be a challenge, but, but that you will turn this into a, a reality. You will turn this into a reality. You would allow the Lord to have his way in your life. I'm glad that I did it when I was much younger. I had, I had so many colleagues. I had so many buddies that were encouraging me to go the wrong way. First time I went to America, I had some buddies that, and I went on a church mission. I had some guys that wanted to take me for a spin, and they had fast cars. And I had not long gotten married. My wife was back here in Barbados. I tell them I'm waiting for a call from my wife. Nobody had taken away this lie from me. I, I, I mean, it wasn't a lie. I was really waiting for a call, but I could have said otherwise. But you got sense for yourself. I mean, don't let nobody push you in the wrong direction. And I had some guys that were introducing me to the white life. One fellow now is blind as a bat. Instead of looking after himself, he looked after the girls. And now he can't see the girls. I never followed bad company. And that's what has me here today. I followed the Lord. And I encourage you to do likewise. Follow the Lord. And I believe that God is speaking to some heart today. God is speaking to some man or some woman. Somebody who's been procrastinating. You know, it says that procrastination is what? A thief of time steals your time. Steals your time. And you are always putting back till tomorrow and putting back till tomorrow and putting back till tomorrow. It is high time saints of God, to awake out of our sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we first believe. May God bless us and help us. That we will take serious thought today. Not until we leave this house, but even after we have left this house, 
And after we have left the cemetery, that we would make a concerted effort to serve the Lord. God bless you. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, we, we give you thanks, God, and we give you praise today for these precious moments you have afforded us. Oh God, you have allowed us another day to continue where we left off yesterday. And God, you have been encouraging us, urging us on, Lord, to take the right road and to go in the right direction. In the midst of this pandemic in which we are experiencing, God, we realize that you are yet the same. You are not troubled by it. You can still bless and you can still save. And you can still minister and you can still heal. You're the same God. Father, I ask today, O oh Lord God, that you would show yourself real to members of this congregation today. Show yourself real. O oh God, those who may have thought you to be a figment of the imagination, O oh God, will change, O oh God, from this day forward. And that they would see you as the great God of heaven, the great and mighty God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Minister to us, even as we've come toward the end of this service. Bless our hearts. Bring about change within us. And Father, we thank you for doing it. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to turn to our hymn sheet. So we sing the last song of this recite before we go and lay our sister to rest. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away. Lord bless us as we sing that song. We're glad because we have a place where we can all meet again around the throne of God.
can only fly away one morning if you've made your covenant with the Lord. And uh, we want to encourage those of you who are here who don't know Christ as a Savior, that you will take time out when you hear the voice of God speaking to you, that you'll make that decision to surrender your life to God. Accept what he has done for you on Calvary. And if you do that, you have the assurance that if you'd pass away your call from this life, that you would make your calling and election sure. God bless you. May you bow our heads for prayer. Our Father, we thank you for bringing us together this evening to worship you. We thank you again for the life and witness of our sister Doria. We thank you, Lord, because she has been able to raise good children. Godly children, those that fear you. We're glad for the influence of her life. And I pray that as we would leave, Lord, to lay her body to rest. I pray that as we would have reflections, that those who are her siblings would have a desire to follow. And those who are children, Father, would have a desire to serve you. That they'll be meeting somewhere, somewhere in the sky, when time shall be no more. Again, Lord, we thank you for your blessings with us. Be with us, Lord, as we will journey, Lord, to lay her to rest. This we pray in Jesus' name. God bless you. Heaven smile you as we recess in Jesus' name. Some glad morning when this life is over
never continuous in one state. In the midst of life, we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor, but of thee, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased. Yet, O Lord God most holy, O Lord most mighty, O holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy mercies or thy merciful ear to our prayers, but spare us, Lord most holy. O God most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, Thou most worthy judge eternal, suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall from Thee. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God in His wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased sister, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose coming in glorious majesty to judge the world. The earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, from henceforth. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. You know, turn to our hymn sheets and sing the first song for burial. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And we would encourage you to join in the singing. Don't want the minister to sing alone. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever, my Lord, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate. And has shed his own blood for my soul. <clears throat> it is well 
with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, for oh, the bliss of this glorious soul. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. <coughs> It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, it's the day when my soul. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. <coughs> the trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. <coughs> It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well, it is well, with my There is a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. There is a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place in the in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore we shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious song of the blessed when their spirit shall sorrow no more, not a sigh for the blessing of rest. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, 
it shall be that beautiful show to our bountiful Father above. We will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of love and the blessings that hallow our day in the sweet by and by we shall that beauty in the sea we shall By and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. In the sea, by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We will offer our tribute of praise for the folly escape of his love and the blessings that are Lord in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. When the roll is, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore. The roll is called up yonder. I'll be there. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is call of yon when the roll is call of yonder I'll be there on that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share when his chosen one shall gather their home beyond the sea and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till Let us talk about his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, when the 
when the roll is full of yawn, when the roll is full of yonder I'll be dead. Sing our final song. When we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout for victory. While we walk the pilgrim path, Clouds will overspread the sky. But when troubling days are over, not a sad or not a sigh. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. But we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout for victory. Let us then be true and trust in serving every When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Onward to the Christ before us, Soon his beauty will be home. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. When we, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all See Jesus, he will sing and shout for victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, he will sing and shout for victory. Let's see, certainly want to thank God for the service today. We want to thank God for all of you who have joined us in our sympathies and upholding this family at this time of bereavement. We certainly appreciate your presence and your support. We want to thank God for the professional services of the Belmont Funeral Home and for each and every one of you that has played your part in making this service 
the wonderful experience that it has been. Um, I want to thank Riley Simmons next to me who shared in the service in the church, or Bishop Howell who um, has had to return back home. And uh, we certainly want you to know that we will be remembering you in prayer, that God will bless you, and that God will continue to strengthen you even though there will be a void in your home for a while, but we know that God is able to fill that void uh, even at this time. We're going to pronounce the benediction at this time. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may the love of God and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us all both now and forevermore. Amen. Though I'm missing you, I'll find a way to get through. Living without you, cause you Zone.